Okay, now we got our stuff cut up and split. I want to try and start us a fire here. Well, I'm going to use my fire pit here at the base camp today. Uh, we're not truly bushcrafting it, but we're going to use a ferro rod and the proper way to do it anyway. So, what I've got here is a, a base of grass, dried grass, and some twigs in a triangle shape just to help contain the fire and make the the base coals in a concentrated area. So I've got my grass and under the grass what I've done is I've put a base of wood underneath the grass on top of my grate. And the reason I stay in the habit of doing this is if you build a fire on the ground, the ground will release moisture into your fire without some kind of base and it'll, and it'll put your fire out. It's really hard to get one going that way. So always try to get in the habit of putting some wood down to start your fire on no matter what you use even if it's in a grill it's just a good habit to be in so um, I split some forearm size wood here some wrist size broke up some thumb size and have some twigs also so we should have enough here to get the fire going so let me uh, grab my fire ferro rod and I've uh, feathered up some some fat wood here to help get it going because it's a little damp today so we'll see how this works out for us okay let me get down here where I can reach it okay let's see if we can get this bad boy going Twigs. Put them on there. I don't worry about having too small of twigs if I know what I have is uh, good and dry. Then I'll usually just use a uh, finger size. Some of it's a little damp. We can hear it sizzling just a little bit. Okay. Now it's okay to keep adding wood as long as your flames are above your wood. If your flames end up lower than the wood you have in here, then stop adding and kind of get some air in there. Fluff up your wood a little bit, let air get under it. But I think we're good to go here. So I'll keep adding and we'll get this fire going pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go over the tools I've used on this video. First one I'm going to go over is my knife. Um, I mentioned in one of my very first videos when I started the channel, I explained about using a combination of tools and that's what I normally do. Uh, for today, I used my smaller knife to baton wood just to show you that it would. I have not done that before and I probably won't do it again unless it's just really really small stuff and then uh, I'll show you here in a little bit the knife that I do use for batoning and then I've got my axe for for splitting also so first thing I'm gonna go over is my knife what we have here is the condor bush lore and the reason I went with this is I looked at a lot of starter knives that were inexpensive but good quality um, was really impressed with Mora knives. Um, Schrade makes some awesome knives. And uh, Gerber, believe it or not, I don't think they're classified as uh, bushcraft knives. 
but they have one called the strong arm that I liked real well and I did pick that up but it's on my bug out equipment so uh, we'll go over it another day but for now I chose the condor bush lore over the mora and the charade because I wanted something that looked traditional I like the wood handle um, it's full tang the moras aren't but from what I understand they're they're very very tough and they don't break very easy either so I've added a leather lanyard on here to help get it out of the, the sheath um, I'm not going to go over a lot of the detailed specs it's nine blah blah maybe a quarter inch long cutting edge four and approximately three eighths handle about four and three quarter something like that so um, I also like the knife the way it's designed in the handle how it's got the belly on it that fills the palm of your hand. Um, it's got the, the bead blasted finish on the top of the blade. I like that real well, and I like the Scandi grind. So those are some of the reasons I went with the Condor also. Um, I haven't had a bit of trouble with this knife. I bought it, like I said in an earlier video, from a place called Baryonyx Knife Company. And for an extra $7, they'll put a, a, a real fine edge on it. And he goes through a seven step process to inspect the knife and if there's any flaws he'll do away with that knife send it back to condor and he'll get a good one and he'll see, make sure he sends you a good one so if you're interested in a knife check it out see if he carries it he'll do you right so uh i wouldn't call this knife cheap because of the quality um the wood that i was uh batoning earlier is a uh, hedge and anyone around this area that's familiar with hedge uh, it's pretty tough stuff. It's like a nightmare to work with. So that's the uh, small knife that I carry on my belt all the time. So that's what I use in camp. The other knife that I do use for batoning that I've picked up is the Habilis SRT. Now, I went with this knife because it is big, bad, and it is tough. I think uh, you probably saw me earlier when I was batoning with it. I was waylaying pretty hard on this knife to get that cut started. So this knife is tough and it didn't affect the edge whatsoever. The finish is starting to wear off the knife, but that just gives it character. Um, this knife has a, a full tang, obviously, and it has the, uh, the end that sticks out. I can't remember off the top of my head what you call it. Um, it has a ferrule rod notch to start fires with on your ferrule rod and it has an area they call the anvil for batoning wood to keep your wood from slipping off the knife. So uh, very good knife, has a good finger choil in it, helps you choke up, um, has a real heavy blade. I'm not sure the, the thickness, um, I think it's just under a quarter inch, but I'll see if I can get it to focus in for you here show you what the edge looks like there's the anvil there's the ferro rod notch they've cut into it on the other side has a bow drill divot which i do not use so i have no intentions of doing bow drills not at this time anyway um, has two stainless pins has two um, bushings through the handle to tie in to make a spear with if you need to um, has a couple lashing points on the end of the blade on the back so uh, really impressed with it and this thing is tough it'll take a beating so that's what i picked up to do my batoning with if i need a knife to baton with or to chop limbs off of trees you know if i don't have my axe with me or something like that so just something kind of in between the axe and the knife um, to use for that so another item i used was my saw to cut down the tree I have a Silky Gomboy, um, Baco Laplander, great saw. Um, I chose this one, I think the blade's a little bit longer. Um, this one does not lock closed like the Baco does, but uh, from the videos I researched and watched, this cuts just a little bit better. Um, I can't actually say that because I haven't used the Baco, but Gomboy is what I use from Silky. So, uh, good saw pick you one up if you need it very inexpensive I think uh, I checked yesterday they were going for $25 $28 maybe and the Baco I think you can get for 20 it is a little more inexpensive but a little smaller so not that big a deal the ferro rod I used to start my fire with today 
is from Self-Reliance Outfitters. It's the half inch thick model. Um, I like it real well. I've not actually tried a smaller one. Don't know if I like it or not, so I can't really make a comparison on it. But I'm happy with this one, and as long as I'm happy with something, I'll continue to use it. So that's the ferro rod I have. The axe I used to split the wood today is the Husqvarna Carpenter's Axe. Has a nice leather sheath that goes on it. I keep it razor sharp. The reason I chose this axe, again, like my Condor knife, is not because it's cheap, but because it's inexpensive and it is extreme quality. Hickory handle, blade, stamped, made in Sweden, it's hand forged, good quality, done right, um, just real happy with it. It's uh, 20 inches, full length, and another reason I chose this axe over some of the other ones, even if they would have been less expensive, is the finger choil right here. A lot of the other axes have a divot here, but it's more straight and squares off with the handle. This one is rounded. It helps you get your fingers in there better and more comfortable. This axe will also do fine work. It's very handy when you can choke up on your axe like this. And I'll try and show you what I'm talking about here. We'll do a little shaving with it. I mean, it's no different than the Habilis SRT knife I have. This axe will make feather sticks, will shave sticks, if you keep it sharp, and it is a dream to use. It's a little heavier than some of the other axes, but that's okay because I think the extra weight aids me in doing something with cutting. Because like I said, I'm just starting my channel. My arms aren't really very strong yet, so I get a lot of cramping and the heavier blade actually helps me a lot. So that's the axe I use. Um, I also mentioned in my uh, beginning video, the very first one I did, I mentioned using a combination of tools. And that's what I do. Like I said today, I use my knives to baton with. The Habilis, I will continue to use it probably more so than any other. The Condor, I won't do, I won't do that again. Um, but the combination I've come up with is I have my, my base camp knife, my saw to cut my wood into lengths, and then I have my ax to split it with. This is made to make notches, feather sticks, stripping sticks, um, things of that sort. Cutting rope, um, nylon, uh, let's see, paracord, whatever you need cut in camp, it's very good for that. I keep it razor sharp. But if but you have the combination of tools, I think things will last you a lot longer, and that's why I go with that. Um, so that covers the combination that I was talking about, and this is the combination I like until I can afford to get some better stuff. Uh, there's some expensive stuff out there that is wonderful. Uh, I've seen videos on it, heard people talk about it, and it's exciting to look forward to getting some of that stuff, but you don't have to have it. I think I paid 35 for the knife, plus the $7 for him to put the extra edge on it and do the inspection. Uh, I'll just ballpark this at 30. So I've got $65. I think I paid 56 for the ax. Um, so we're looking 110 bucks. And I know for a fact, most of the axes, the better names, are well over that amount. Some of the knives, most of the knives, when you get over $100 are well more than that. So I got the full combination of tools that I can use and do everything I need to do for less than what most people are paying just for their knife. So, just wanted to go over that real quick with you. Um, let you know what I've been using. Um, I'll go over some other stuff in detail a little bit later. Probably do another video on the Habilis. Um, I'll go over video on my pack, uh, things I wear, um, things like that. So, stay tuned and check in often. Uh, God bless you, we'll see you later.